The most precious person in the world, according to many, many wise people, far wiser than you and myself, is someone that is both highly logical and very intuitive. Uh, let's discern the facts. I say women have natural, talk about women's intuition, right? That's generalization. People say, oh my God, uh, today's modern society, of course, is sick, demented, and deranged. That's why the Indians call it the Kali Yuga, or the end of times, because you can't make a generally accurate statement because it is not always applicable. Well, generalizations exist because they're generally accurate. This is why, for example, women are better caregivers. As last I recalled, women had these things called breasts, and they actually gave birth. They had something called a womb, and they have a genetic inheritance to uh, be better caregivers, and that's why women are better nurses. And that is also the reason why men make better firefighters. This is not a sexist statement. It's an empirically valid statement. When men, except for me, <laughs> except for me, right, uh, have bigger muscles, and so you generally want, like, some burly, hairy, uh, uh, you know, uh, dude with a Cro-Magnum forehead dragging your ass out of a fire from the 15th floor of an apartment complex, right? Generally accurate, you know? I don't want, like, the someone in a fire outfit like, fire outfit like Paris Hilton, you know, dragging me out of fire. And this is not a sexist. It has nothing to do with sexism in this video, for God's sakes. I'm just talking about things that are generally accurate, you know? Nurses make, you know, women make much better nurses. Intuition versus the people that are logical. I spent my entire life observing people and the stupidity and the, the things that they do. And it amazes me that you can pigeonhole people. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a woman or a man. Of course, women are better uh, intuitively. They could like sense things. It's like everybody kind of admits that's the case. And then you have highly logical people that will actually let themselves get run over with until they actually work it out on the calculator. Uh, you, as you've seen these examples in movies, um, a famous one that I can think of was a movie. It's called Poseidon. It's a remake of an old movie that the boat turns upside down in a big wave and. And uh, the captain's down there, and the boat's upside down, and of course, you know, the, the glass is about to break, and the water's going to pour in and drown the hell out of everybody. And uh, everybody's looking to the captain because he knows what's right. Of course, he's the captain. No, no, stay here. We have safety measures in place. And then you have smart people that are intuitive, and uh, they're talking to some others like, no, this shit's going down. We're all about to die. Let's get the F out of here. <laughs> so they build a ladder out of a giant Christmas tree, and they make their way out, and surely enough, everybody dies. You know, the water pours in. Everybody, everybody dies. Yeah. It is amazing to me that there are two, really two different types of people totally, and uh, a mix of the two. Someone is extremely logical, it's like, I have to have the facts. I don't believe anything until it's presented. These are the same people that are uh, complete to the antithesis of, antithesis, excuse me, of metaphysicians who are able to interpret things and uh, con out things and uh, retroduct the nature of the universe of things that cannot be palpably seen. Like, for example, the, uh, the subject is never an object of observation. and you, uh, It's like the idiot that walks outside of his house regarding the soul and looks inside the window of his own house and says nobody lives here. Um, these are the people that need empirical evidence for everything before they will make a move in life. There are other people, and it's not just women, I mean, there are plenty of intuitive men. It's like, you know, I can see the trend of what's going on here. It's like, I can read the writing on the wall, and the other person that works off a slide rule and a calculator says, I, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I need evidence. It's like, well, you, you wait for the evidence, asshole. I'm going to move on this. A lot of people in the stock market, they have an intuition. And there's not many of them because the stock market is incredibly volatile and there's a billion different variables. But they work off of intuition and they're incredibly successful at the stock market. But this is also applicable of uh, things in daily life where someone has a feeling because they have a natural intuition for which there are no empirical facts. And they will make a decision based upon that intuition. And they are right, oh man, a lot of the time. Really, really high. Extremely high. Um, the people that both disgust me and amaze me, and it's just in their nature. And... Uh, and it involves anybody and everybody. It's mostly men, though, but I mean, it can certainly be women or people that they feel that they have to have, you know, 
a, a mountain of evidence before they can make conclusion about something or intuition is so so underrated by so many people these days we think we live in an age of science where everything is reasonable and calculable and that's just absolute BS we think everything is digitizable and binary ones and zeros and you know if I given enough evidence to make a logical conclusion people are people think or are trying to imitate uh, robots it's absolutely mind-blowing to me that so many people have lost uh, an intuitive edge to be able to discern things and see things like I can see people it's like I I'll figure them out in five minutes they don't even have to tell me stuff it's the stuff that they don't say the way they present themselves you know say you can't judge a book by its cover when someone gives you verbal ticks and uh, things they do say what they emphasize about themselves or don't emphasize about themselves I mean this is where retroduction comes into play quite a lot but I mean Retroduction is not intuition, but they, they kind of go, they're brother and sister, they go hand in hand. You're using extreme logic uh, as applied to uh, intuition and using that. Someone that's hyperlogical and yet extremely intuitive is the most intelligent critter that exists. Someone that is, uh, will not let emotions get in the way of their decision-making factors, but they are able to synthesize things that cannot be synthesized by mere evidence alone. These people are incredibly rare. They are really very incredibly rare. I, I wish, I don't know if there were more people like that back in the ancient times or not. There seem to have been, but possibly not. But certainly today, I mean, people that are uh, logical, intuitive on a high scale make up far less than 1%, far less, probably far less than half of 1% of the population. There are people that live by evidence alone. And, you know, that's good to a certain extent and it's certainly good for a certain type of career that you have, you know, depending on what that is. I mean, if you're someone that programs a computer code, obviously you have to be this hyper-logical person and intuition plays no part in anything. It's just all ones and zeros or C plus or whatever the hell sort of computer code that you write. Everything is just logical only. And I'm not talking about emotions when it comes to intuitive. I'm talking about the, the wisdom by which you're able to see everything like a fractal. If you actually know how the fractal of a situation works, be it a person or a situation or an event, you're able to project the highly logical outcome in the very near future, even in the far distant future. This is why uh, logical, intuitive people are really good at the stock market. They're uh, really good at a lot of other different things. Um, I find that so fascinating about people. It's like I'll tell people stuff and they're like, I need the proof. You know, I don't believe anything. It's like, well, look, boom, 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 boom. There's no other answer. Using retroductive uh, logic, that is what's happening. And it always does turn out to be that. No, 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 no. I need some serious evidence. Well, good for you, you know. Go ahead and wait for it, you, you, you idiot. Um, that's a fascinating aspect of human psychology, that there's so few... A hyper logical and intuitive people. So they're people that are emotional and irrational. They uh, they make good artists, by the way. They just they go everything they do is just emotional and irrational, like an animal. And they do make good artists. And they're the people that are hyper logical. They're slide ruling everything. They have to see it in front of them with uh, extensive uh, existential criteria and validation. It's like okay, now I believe it. Um, However, falsification of evidence is like the biggest thing in the world today. People actually make discoveries and inventions and then they give descriptions of those, but they can't explain it or they'll come up with a BS explanation. There are countless inventions and uh, field theorists today, for example, that will give you uh, fancy equations, but they can't explain anything. It's like how to... There's a famous person that wrote this computer program. I don't want to give his name. And uh, I've seen his lectures and uh jesus really brilliant guy he works for nasa now and uh very 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 hyper logical a brilliant person he wrote this insane computer code to program magnetism well he has no idea what magnetism is nor how it works and he was giving a lecture showing his computer code on uh you know simulating magnetic interactions which had enormous math equations in it and someone said uh, there's a spirograph like pattern from the ferrocell up on 
And some of the guys says, how does that, why does that, uh, I'll give him credit for this though. Someone says to him on his lecture, why does that pattern look like that? And the guy says, I have no idea. I don't know, we don't know. It's like, you, 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 you write computer code on s simulating magnetism, but you have no idea what magnetism is or what the hell's going on. I mean, there's a beautiful picture there like the spirograph pattern I've shown you, right? Uh, I can probably bring it up here. He's, uh, this is up on his uh, projector. And uh, here, you know, is it this one? No, it's this one. Here we go. This. So he says, what is that? I mean, why does it look that way? Well, I have no idea. It's like somebody that uh, can build a car in a CAD program on a computer, but they don't know how a car, you know, they don't know how to drive a car. They don't know what the experience is like. So how does, you know, what is the qualitative experience of driving. I have no idea. I just build the crap, you know. <laughs> that just amazes me about humans. Um, I think humans have de-evolved quite substantially. The people that are able to engage intuition uh, are kind of like animals. You know how animals have a sixth sense? Like if you're really agitated, for example, I mean not that I have a pet dog, but I mean I hear this stuff all the time. Like if you're really agitated or, or you're sick, and you're not showing it visually, externally, you're like your dog or your cat will know that you're like sick or you're dying or like uh, dogs can intuit that you're down or whatever even though you don't ex exhibit anything. You give off smells too, obviously, but uh, the dogs can smell that. Um, so I hear, because I know dogs can sniff out cancer now. I've trained dogs to sniff out cancer. I'm not saying humans need to be bestial, but we lost this native intuition to be able to grasp how the universe works, that we'll walk right over. It's like, you're about to walk over a cliff, Bill, stop. Well, I need, I need verification with that. You know, they're sitting there with a the slide rule in their calculator, and then they fall off the cliff. They need all the evidence in the world before they can actually act on something. I find those people absolutely amazing. They are like looking at a strange science experiment. They are looking at... Like the first time scientists discovered the coelacanth, what they thought was extinct, they're like, wow, look at that crap. I'm, I look at people like that that have no intuitive skills at all to see what the hell is going on, and I look at them like a really strange animal. It's like, wow, you, I feel so sorry for you. Um, I do feel sorry for people like that. It must be horrible for someone to go through life like a robot where everything they need needs hardcore existential proof to be able to jump to a conclusion, kind of like the same people in that Poseidon movie. There are all these people like, yeah, we need, we need validation from some part of the boat that, uh, we're, you know, that something is wrong and we should do something. And these intuitive people are like, no, this shit's going down. We need to get the hell out of here because we're going to die when the windows break. <laughs> um, and it was, of course, a small group of people. And that's pretty accurate, actually, that uh, movie, because that's how humans are. There are people that will sit around like lemmings. They're like, you know, I need proof of something before I do something. And then there's a small group of people like, we can smell what's going on here. We can smell what's going on here. Boom. <sighs> Don't you find that fascinating about humans? Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.